Hey folks, Brian Keen with Occam Defense. Super excited for this video today, which is how to install a mag catch in a Kalashnikov. And that's for a few different reasons. Um, one of them is that for builders, swaging the rivet that holds in the mag catch itself has been just a bear and a real, just a bummer for us to have to work with. And we finally come up with a tool that is that we think is good enough to be on the market to uh, help people do that job well. Um, it also is one of the areas where a novice who's still handy, knows how to use a file and a screwdriver, um, can get in and work on their gun and make it way better and more usable. By which I mean, you know, mag changes, manual of arms, just sort of the ergonomics of the gun. This is a real easy way to make your gun a lot better. Um, particularly, and, and I'm generally not a fan of enhanced anything on the AK, uh, however, the enhanced mag catch that we've come up with, that we've called the fat bottom, that you'll see in a second here, is, uh, is really good. And if you're training a lot and doing dry practice, your thumb will just get worked by engaging the sheet metal mag catch. And um, this thing makes it a lot more comfy, a lot easier to access, and by virtue of being billet, it just has more round edges on it. It feels better. So uh, without further ado, let's kick it off. All right, here's what you need to get going. A selection of magazines. Uh, we use a steel mag, a mag pole, an X-Tech, and a plastic bulgy with uh, steel feed lips. You'll need your gun. Pair of safety glasses, these are not um, just so we don't get sued. There's stuff that can actually hurt your eyes here, so wear your safety glasses. Need a range flag and a safed gun, so uh, make sure your gun is unloaded and uh, that something's in the chamber or you've removed the bolt carrier and bolt from the gun. You need the uh, mag catch swaging tool. A center punch that's spring-loaded so it uh, works like a hammer and will punch a hole. We use that to check the swage. You need the spring compression tool in the fat bottom kit or a Forbus tool from robertforbus.com. Axis pin, uh, mag catch spring, the mag catch, a six flute. I like these, you don't need to use one. Six flute, Countersink from McMaster Car, 90 degrees. Number 16 drill. A screwdriver is what we like with a five millimeter shaft on it. Uh, this one's made by Stanley, but really a drill bit or any sort of um, five millimeter shaft will work fine. Pair of pliers, we really like the Knipex. These are part number 8603250. A file it doesn't have to be fancy but it does have to be good a nicholson will do you just fine um, and you want a, a double cut meaning cross cut or single cut but fine this one here is a mill bastard um, then a cordless drill for removal of the old mag catch axis pin and driving the countersink all right let's get into it Okay, so for removal of the old mag catch pin, you'll need the number 16 drill, spring-loaded uh, center punch, and the cordless drill. We're gonna go ahead and chuck up this drill bit. And then I like uh, the edge of a bench for this. Just center that drill bit up and go slow with a lot of pressure. So low RPM, high feed pressure. Gone down a little bit, that might be enough. We're just trying to weaken the swage that's on each side here. All right. So this side looks a little weaker, so we're gonna try punching it through. There it goes. You can see now why I love this center punch so much. It's a very controlled instrument for this job. I'm gonna grab my Nipex pliers here 
and just pull it out the last little bit. This will free a spring, so uh, again, safety glasses. There we go. There's our old one. So now this is out. Next thing to do, um, whether it's a new gun or one um, that you're uh, that you're retrofitting, these happen to be quite good. Um, let me try and get them dead on in the camera. You want to make sure these are uh, parallel to each other. These aren't perfect, but they're not bad either. And uh, I think I'm going to leave them alone. If you see one that's badly out, reach in. This is why these Nipex pliers are so great, is the parallel smooth jaw. It allows you to do movements like this. You can kind of reef outwards a little bit or inwards. Um, it allows you to do that kind of operation without marring the, the surface of the the trigger guard. Something with a tooth is going to ding that up. All right, first thing to do is check parallel here. Second thing is to inspect um, the chamfer if there is one on the two sides of these. I really like to put in a little whisper chamfer there. The reason is this rivet, as we swage it, is going to do this, ideally. If there's metal here blocking it, it's not going to be able to do that as easily and other things are going to happen. If you can clear out a little place for that metal to swage into, it's going to be much more secure. So now we're going to take the countersink that I was telling you about, and this is optional. This is just how I like to do it. We're going to chuck that countersink up and then I'm going to just with very low RPM, much lower than the drill, and pretty high pressure. I'm just going to go around a couple times and cut in a little whisper chamfer there. It's probably only 10, 10 thou deep. And likewise, I'm going to try and zoom in on that. That's what we're talking about. Nothing crazy. You don't want it to look like you could fit a deck screw down in there and have it be um, be flush. We're just giving it a little place to grab. All right, so now we have a prepped receiver. Sidewall straight, uh, holes gently countersunk. All right, for this part of the job, which is tuning the mag catch, you'll need a file. Uh, an axis pin is really helpful, but not required, like a fire control group axis pin. The fat bottom, your uh, receiving gun with a, with a range flag or the bolt carrier out of it, and then three or four comparison mags to test your fit with. The first thing to take care of, which has already been done on this receiver, is to file the selector stop back. And you just want to go file straight down that um, until there's a whisper of daylight between this face and the front of the selector stop there. After you've done that, it's time to pick up the catch and see what's going on. So just orient it properly and then stick your axis pin in. This will give you a pretty close approximation to what the catch is going to do. It won't be identical. So we can see here that the catch isn't sticking out far enough. So the thing to do is to trim this tab back until we're getting about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half of stick out. So up to about a 16th of stick out right there. So I'm just gonna come along and files only cut. You kinda wanna hold it like, there's a, a lot of ways to do things right. The way that I like for this job is like this. And you only cut on the push, so you don't win anything by back dragging. Um, so now, let's see, I normally have, I normally use a belt sander for this, but I want to use tools that you guys definitely have available. Um, so uh, it's going to get screechy here. Try to not have it screech, but I'm just going to take meat off of this face at roughly the same angle that it's at. Okay, we're gonna try that now. 
definitely one of those things to take a couple passes. If you're not unfamiliar with the speed of that cutting, um, then with how fast that file cuts, how, you know, all those little particulars, um, definitely just take a couple passes and then check it. And that's what I'm doing here. Like I said, I don't normally use a file um, and we haven't moved much at all. I can see that um, it's hitting on the bottom. So I'm gonna focus more on that area next. Okay, I'm gonna try that now. Okay, we're starting to get some definite stick out. I'm gonna try and zoom in here. It's poking out just a little bit. So a little more here. I don't love that. Figuring out the ergonomics is always an interesting part of the process. As one section starts getting loaded up, you can flip. I didn't put a file card on this because you can use other things like a steel brush. Um, but if you look up file card and you don't have one, they make life better. Okay, we're starting to get about where we want to be, um, but I still want to go a little further. It's looking just about perfect. I think we're going to leave that alone. The next thing to tune is um, this face, or we're not going to tune the mag, although this is where you would tune. If you have one outlier mag that's tight, just take material off of there. But for this, we're going to be taking it off of this face here. So now let's stick the... Uh, Mag catch back in, and I'm just going to apply hand pressure here, and we don't go on yet. Okay, so we need to take some off. Let's see where the other ones are at, if there's any takers. This one goes on, just the steel one barely goes on, but I have to kind of gorilla it on there. Let's see about this X-Tech. X-Tech I can force on. And the bulgy plastic is a no-go at all. So we'll take a little meat here. And I think I'm gonna set this up like this and I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna rock before I start cutting because I wanna cut straight across the top if I can to keep it from getting cattywampus. I'm just gonna check every now and then to make sure that I'm actually doing that. Okay, I'm gonna check a little bit here. Uh, no, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, we're cutting clean across the top. Something you can do is use a little dicum or a black magic marker if you're wondering where you're cutting. We're still pretty flat across the top. I've got a little bit of a dip over there, but it's it's not bad. So now we're just going to put a little edge chip. Yeah, that angry thing I just got rid of, that'll hang up on your mags and cut them. So just round that off a little bit. So this is one of the really nice things about working on your own stuff is that you can take the care and time where there frankly isn't the economics for guns that are 
not in the super premium price range for people to be carrying about little stuff like this that actually goes into shooter experience uh, pretty profoundly. Go back in here for a test fit. And this is the recipe for all this stuff is make a little cut, check it. Make a little cut, check it. It's, it's, it's not more complicated than that. Okay, we're go on an X-Tech. We're go on steel. We are a no-go on Magpul. These are always um, tight. And this one may have even been filed on a little bit because there was an obscene, there's mostly, there's usually some pretty bad burrs on these things when they come in. Okay, still a no-go on the bulgy. So we'll uh, uh, keep going a little bit here. Um, we said we were towing down a little bit on the right. So what I'm gonna try and do this time is really keep it flat and pay a little bit more attention to the left edge there, the front edge. Again, we're just gonna hit that edge. All right. Okay, we're go on the bulgy. It's a little tight um, getting it off. So there might be a little burr on the back side there. Okay, we're starting, I can force it onto the mag pull. So we're, we're getting quite close. flat still doing this outside the gun is so nice uh, that we just drill all of our if we have any pre-riveted um, mag catches we drill all of them now and just use the mag catch swager because we can do this job so much better just gonna come in and these are the burrs that'll mess with it on the way back out. So I'm just gonna try and get them down a little bit. So we'll try this way. This is hardened 4140, so it, uh, it doesn't give up easily. Okay, let's try again here. Hey, now we've got, I'm getting a tiny bit of drag there, but it feels like it'll wear in pretty nicely. So I'm gonna leave it alone. And uh, feels nice, it's all deburred. One thing that can happen is that this positioning, see how there's a little bit of wobble in it? Um, when you add a spring to the situation and the axis pin, uh, you can get different behavior. So what we're going to do now is check um, using the spring and axis pin that'll actually get swaged. Um, if that doesn't go well, we'll just retune it, but you're going to see more of the same. Um, you just go back to, to what you were just witnessing me do if you don't get what you want on the, um, on the check using the spring. For testing the tuned mag catch with the spring, you'll need the spring compression tool, your center punch, screwdriver, and the Nipex pliers plus the donor or the the Doni gun. All right, so we're gonna take the short side of this spring. See how there's a short side and a long side. We're gonna tow that up against the fat bottom. Slide this in here. And there's a long, slow video about how to do this uh, if this seems complicated. So uh, watch the fat bottom and mag catch swager uh, demonstration video here. This is the detailed on a gun video. After we've got that lined up, we're gonna stick our 
access pin in and I'm just going to shove down on the edge of the bench here and I can see that I need to do just a little English to the left here and it's going to drop right in. Okay, and then I'm going to pinch both sides, pull the mag catch. Feels good, looks pretty good. Let's try it. I think the mag pull is the tightest. Oh, money. Good. Good. All right, we are winning. Um, that feels great, so we're going to go ahead and swage it. All right, now that we have a tested and fitted uh, mag catch, we're going to go ahead and swage it. So position the gun uh, like this, and again, we've got a range flag in it, um, or the bolt carrier is out. And uh, it can be helpful to have, you know, like a couple chunks of wood or something here to help cradle the gun. Um, but it's, it's able to be done just like this as well. So you're going to slack the, the drive screw here until you just come tight and like fingertip tight. And the thing is, the swager is hinging nicely. You're sure that it's got the, the rivet and, and not something else. Um, or you're also going to look and see that it's centered very nicely because the centering you put in here is going to be the centering you get. Um, with the pin left to right side on these two sidewalls here. So I've found that going about, after you come fingertip tight, you're going to be able to crank through almost a turn, and then you're going to hit like a hard resistance level. Stop when you hit the hard resistance level. Here's our first half turn. I think right about, I'm hitting it right about there, so a little under one turn. It may differ depending on your the, the kind of pin you're using. Different countries make them different ways. Um, and the particular gun you're working on. So first thing is, does this thing cycle smoothly? It does, it feels great. Does it look as if these are both swaged pretty equally? Yes, they do. And so now we're gonna take our center punch and just check that. We're gonna give it three clicks on each side. We are done. Let's check one last time. Good, good lockup. Good. Good. Money. I'm feeling a little tightness over here. While you're in here, if these edges are super sharp, as these are off this, it's a partially finished receiver, you can come in here with a Kratex wheel, and also these little guys down on the bottom, sometimes those are left a little long. I'll try and point to it a little better here. These guys are uh, sometimes sharp and will carve on your mags. If you see a bunch of scratches up in here, that's those uh, locating rails there. But just going over this with a Kratex wheel, uh, nice and light, you don't want to be removing large amounts of metal, just get rid of the sharpness. That'll make your mag catches, or your mag changes quite a bit smoother. You can also go through and take some emery cloth um, or a Dremel gently to all these radii that are so good at cutting us up. One of our big things is to cut uh, a fairly deep radius here or round it over on the inside as well. If you're doing a Russian style one-handed grip change, this area in particular, that's what cuts up this knuckle on your on your hand. So dealing with that guy uh, right now is is pretty great. And then just hit it with your favorite Tactical Krylon uh, and uh, you'll be rocking and rolling. Hey, we made it. Congratulations. Uh, I hope that that's been useful, even if you don't plan on touching a mag catch, if you just want to learn more about how the AK works or metalworking in general. If you do have any questions or come into troubles along your, uh, your install, please shoot us an email at admin at occamdefense.com with pictures or a link to a quick YouTube video. You can leave them unlisted so nobody, nobody has to see your sin um, and we won't tell. So uh, we're absolutely on your team when it comes to working on your own gun.
Um, it's a big reason why I got into all of this. So yeah, hope this was useful. Reach out for help. Have a great day.